Hey, what's good, self-direct investors, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jordan, and I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, the financial education brand that aims to help make the world a little bit more financially literate. Now, for today's video, we're going to be talking about XQQ, which is the iShares NASDAQ 100 Index ETF. And this is basically an ETF for Canadian investors looking to get exposure in the NASDAQ Composite Index in the U.S. Um, the same, and it's basically the Canadian version of this well-known in ETF QQQ, which has seen immense growth over the last few years because it's it's very technology heavy, um, and that's really what the Nasdaq has been about. But so today we're going to look at it. Now I actually have done a video on QQQ before, so I will put that link in the description. Um, I'm I'm still new to YouTube, so if I can figure out how to put it in this little corner here, I'm going to try and do that. Um, <laughs> otherwise, just check it out in the description. So if you're an American investor, you definitely want to direct or invest directly in QQQ. I know the share price is quite high. Uh, see if you have a broker that can buy you fractional shares or that can allow you to buy fractional shares. Um, but so for Canadian investors who want to keep their money in Canadian dollars and don't want to exchange their money yet, Basically, XQQ is your best bet to get this exposure of these high, high or fast growth tech companies, um, and and we'll see what this ETF has done so far. Now, if you are a new investor and you have yet to open your brokerage account, please check the affiliate link below. Um, it is a link for Quest Trade, which is the number one broker in Canada. I've been using it to self direct for a few years, and basically, just by using that link, you will get some free money to invest with simply by again using that link. So, if you want to help me out, that would be awesome, and then I can help you out to get you started. But XQQ. Um, oh, it's before that, just if you enjoy this video or you learn something new, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up and give me a like. I would really appreciate it. Uh, and it does help my channel a lot. And I really want to start ramping this up. I apologize that I've been away for, or it's just taken me a while for my last videos. Um, but nonetheless, let's, I'll stop talking and we'll get right into it. So XQQ. Now this is as of, this is the price as of August 19th, 2020, which is yesterday. Um, now today is the 20th of August. So if we were to just type in X, whoops, sorry, backwards XQQ, you will, you know, it, that is the handy thing about Google. Um, I actually remember someone, or I remember talking to someone on, on TikTok recently and they, they just mentioned that, <laughs> I found it a bit ironic, uh, but they just mentioned that they don't like to rely on Google for their investment research. And I'm not sure if that was just kind of like a stock answer that they had, but I mean, obviously where you, like where else are you going to find that information you have to go to google but then through google you got to make sure you're going to the right place so if ever you're curious where you can find these sites again you can type in the ticker and scroll down but make sure you just try to go directly to the source of the asset management company uh, that is where you would open this page up you're going to see this same one but this gives you a lot more information um, and if ever you wanted to you can just type in the fact sheet this as well um, this fact sheet will bring you to the same page that this fact sheet here will. Um, and that's just kind of more of a breakdown. So if you read through this, this one is pretty user experience, or the user experience is quite nice. Um, but this one here kind of tells you the same stuff. Whole reason for me doing that, I do apologize. I get sidetracked way too often. But the price today, <laughs> as of close on August 20th, was $90.40. So the price has gone up a bit, but I just want to show the price difference. Now, when you see here though that this um, NAV change, this means the net asset value. So the total assets minus liabilities divided by um, shares, that is, that's how the, the price is usually made. But basically how the price changes, whenever you see the two together, the first one is always the change in the dollar amount. So $89.17, that means that this closed down 61 cents from the day before. And then the negative percentage beside it is the percentage of or the decrease, or the amount of percentage decrease of 61 cents being subtracted. So that is what you'll see whenever, whenever you even look at a stock chart uh, during the market, during when the market is open and you'll see it go up and down. And if it's green, it'll be, it'll be positive. If it's negative, if it's down, it's in the red, but that's always what that's going to mean when you see the, the dollar figure or a dollar amount, um, either up or down, or percentage amount. And then year to date, this ETF has been crushing it. Clearly, there's no global situation happening for these tech stocks. They keep crushing earnings. And it's just really interesting to see as a new investor to to watch how these companies are pulling this off and really just changing the landscape. But why XQQ? You know, if, if you have a set amount of money that you want to start dollar cost averaging into an ETF, 
this is where you want to look and make sure that your investment goals are lining up with what this ETF has to offer. So XQQ gives you exposure to 100 of the largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock market. And traditionally, the NASDAQ is, um, is a heavy tech focus, but also financial technology. Um, so it, it, I guess it, it's really focusing on more the, the tech and, again, diversifying into large cap companies while avoiding exposure to financial companies. So not investing in any banks of sorts like that. But the objective here seeks to provide long-term capital growth by replicating the performance of the NASDAQ 100 um, hedged to Canadian dollars net of expenses. Um, and all that means is it seeks to track the NASDAQ and it will pay you what's left over after they take their small fee. Now, when you look at the performance, it's absolutely unbelievable what this ETF has done. The hypothetical growth of $10,000 invested when it was created um, since inception, which would have been in May 2011, it's done 18.06%, which is really good. So I'm going to open up a new thing here and just leave this here so we can 18.06%. Phenomenal. Now, um, but even like, look, this past year, 37.45%, and all of these tech stocks, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, not even Apple, mostly, they're the only $2 trillion, well, not the only, but $2 trillion uh, market cap they've just hit, which is incredible. Um, but like clearly, even the last three years, five years, despite the up and downs of the markets in general, this ETF, the, the NASDAQ has done very well. So by investing in this ETF, you'll get that same exposure. Incredible. It's hard to find anywhere else. Seriously. And now distributions, um, basically what you want to look for in any ETF that you're investing in is that the, they've consistently paid dividends over time. If there's any reason why an ETF or a company, obviously, companies will be a little bit more reactionary to this. ETFs, because they're sourcing it from a lot or they're invested in many things, it's it's a bit easier for them to, to continue the distributions. But you just want to make sure if there's any reason why they stopped paying why was it? Did it reflect a time in the market where things were a little bit uncertain? Um, but otherwise, if it has consistently paid dividends, that's a great sign. And you can see that since 2015, it seems to have been paying um, dividends out, and they range from about eight cents or nine cents up to it seems to be about 18 to 20 cents here. Um, but if we look through some of these key facts, um, and we will get to the dividend payout later, but I think this one's semi-annually. So that is one of those trade-offs where you're getting massive growth here, but you're not getting a whole lot in dividends in return. But that's okay. You, again, you have to make different investment decisions for different goals and different outcomes. Now, net assets just means that there is over a billion Canadian dollars invested into this ETF in all the different percentages of different companies. Um, again, it is on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So when you are buying it, you would have to type in X or xqq.to just to make sure you're buying it on the Toronto Stock Exchange. The benchmark that it tracks, this ETF tracks the performance of the NASDAQ 100. Um, units outstanding, so this is the, the amount of shares out there available in the secondary market for people to trade amongst each other, 12.1 million. Um, the inception date, so again, this is going on its ninth year, um, 2011 it was created. It is a 100% equity ETF, and again, I, I just want to clarify that in this day and age, if you're investing in an ETF, make it 100% equity. Any bonds in an ETF at this, like in 2020, is just going to drag it down because bonds literally return nothing, um, and ETFs are already diversified, so at no point are they ever just going to go to zero. It's just, it won't logically happen. So if you are investing in an ETF, make sure it's 100% equity because it's just... Equity equals growth, especially over time. And then rebalances quarterly. Um, that just means they want to make sure that the amount of, uh, per, or the percentage of ownership in each uh, company that they designated from the inception date stays relatively the same. So quarterly, they might go in and make a few adjustments to that, but there's no active trading. And that's why these fees are, are, are kept low because they're passive ETFs. But the other nice thing is that there's 103 ETFs inside here. So you can tell, or 103 assets, companies, that this ETF invests in. So it's not overly diversified, um, but that's why you actually see more growth because it's it's really more concentrated on 100 well-performing companies. And um, just for anyone that were to say investing is risky, if 10 of those companies were to go out of business completely, which again, 
why would 10 companies just want to go out of business? That means a ton of people that are employed lose jobs, right? It's just not sensical thinking. So when people say investing is risky, this is a way to de-risk getting into ETFs that are diversified and that will cover your butt. And hey, you're going to see some volatility and some drops when there is some global uncertainty depending on what happens. But that is again, that's when they go, that's when the price goes on sale and you want to buy more and you want to make sure you balance your cash well enough. Um, in other areas, just so that if that ever does happen, like we saw in March, you just you never have to touch it. You can leave it there. If need be, try to sell some shares, but just don't take it all out. I think new investors or people that don't have experience investing don't realize that you don't need to sell everything. Like if you can keep half your shares in there and take some out because of an emergency, do that. But just keep the money invested because otherwise you stop the compounding effect. Now, portfolio characteristics, there is a dividend reinvestment plan for the CTF. So if you use a tax-free savings account, um, which I recommend for any investor, uh, especially younger investors in lower tax brackets, um, basically what this means is that anytime it pays dividends, you can set up a form with Quest Trade actually. Um, so that anytime you get paid dividends, if the amount that you're paid out is enough to buy one share of this ETF or more, obviously depending how many shares you own, it will automatically buy that uh, buy a new share for you every time you get paid dividends. So once you have a lot of money in there, that's how the snowball works itself. It's really nice. Now, the distribution frequency, this means how often are dividends paid? So dividends are paid semi-annually, that means twice a year. And the last distribution per share, the last dividend that was paid out on June 18th, was 13 cents. Um, so what this also means here, I should point this out, eligible for registered plans. In Canada, the TFSA, the RRSP, the RESP, these are all registered plans. These are um, tax-friendly investing accounts registered with CRA. So it just means that you can buy it within there. Um, and then basically this price to book and PE ratio does just mean that it, it appears to be a little bit on the high side, the price right now. It's you could say it's overvalued. Again, uh, you know you're looking for a PE ratio between 10 and 20. If it falls below 15, more towards 10, that's a good sign that you know you're really buying it at a low point. And just to give an example, in March when the global situation happened and we saw um, we saw a lot of these common ETFs take a take a hit. They didn't you know collapse or anything, but they did see a, a significant drop. But I want to just make a point to a lot of S&P 500 index ETFs. That's when you saw their PE ratio actually go down to like 14, 13. That just meant that like, oh, you know, it's it's a bit undervalued. But once it goes back up and it's above 20, you can just kind of see like, look, obviously the direction everything always heads in is up. Things are always going to hopefully grow more. Um, but I just, I think you can also account for that like this ETF, because it is a, it, it tracks the NASDAQ, which is growth oriented, it's going to have a higher PE ratio. So again, I don't think there's any bad time to ever get in, although the market's at its all-time high. If your dollar cost averaging, which I recommend is the best approach for any investor, whether it's you know 200 a month, 100 a month, just buy one share. You know, Hopefully, the next time there is a correction and the price goes down, hopefully you just have cash so you can buy more at a cheaper price. That's ultimately it. But again, it's better to just get in uh, as opposed to trying to time the market. Um, and the distribution yield, this just means, so th it's 30%. The distribution total... Um, is 0.30% of the total um, price of the ETF right now, which again changes daily, but that is what the distribution yield is. It is the, the percentage makeup of how much, the, how much the dividend is paid out compared to the actual um, share price. Now, fees. This is where you want to get into it. Now, the main reason I don't actually own this is because of the fee. Now, if you look at it though in the grand scheme, 3, 0.39 is still tiny. And I just wanted to, to share this because if we go 0.39, like this is why I'm considering. I don't actually own the CTF, but I'm like, damn, I really should get my money in there as soon as possible. And of course, now I'm like, well, it's on the high side. I already own ETF, so I'm going to stick to that plan that I own or of the ETFs that I already own. But it's, of course, tempting when you see numbers like this. But so, you know, since inception, if it's, so basically what this means is if you bought this ETF in 2011 when it was created and you've held on until now, you would have returned this every single year. And that is just stellar performance. That is how wealth gets built. So um, it, this is a, is a great ETF despite the fact that the ETF's a little bit on the, or the, the fee's a bit on the high side. 
Um, management fee is the fee that the that BlackRock actually pays um, to the individual companies, I believe. But then the management expense ratio, this is the only fee you need to worry about. This is what we investors pay BlackRock. So when it says up here, net of expenses after expenses are taken out. So this is their cut that they keep. Um, and interestingly enough, this the risk factor of this ETF is a medium. It's not even a high risk. And again, ETFs are not high risk. We need to just change that myth. It's utter crap. So hopefully we can get people to realize that. Now I just want to compare the fee to QQQ though. Oh, whoops, get that out of there. Um, QQQ's fee is 0 0.20. So again, you're getting the same thing for a bit double the price, but that is what what BlackRock has to go through to create the CTF, to put it all together, and for them to cover a lot of their fees, I imagine it helps them. But um, that just goes to show the supply and demand, right? Like because the U.S. just has 330 million people, they're able to charge less because there's so much more action and volume, right? So as Canadians, we have a lower market; they have to charge more in order for them to make it worthwhile. That's just economics and supply and demand. But if we get into the holdings of it, what is in this ETF? Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Alphabet, Alphabet, Tes Tesla, it actually owns Tesla as well, Vidya, PayPal, Adobe. Um, we can go through one of 10, one to 10 holdings. If we look at all holdings, we can go through this list. Um, Adobe, see like, wouldn't you want, oh, Netflix, Intel, Pepsi, Cisco, Costco, you're owning all these companies that you're well aware of. You're like Starbucks, Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. Um, and it tells you the percentage of ownership in each, right? So obviously we're seeing a lot of the growth of this ETF because its three biggest ownership percentages are in Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft, all three of which, especially Amazon and Apple, have gone insane this year. So that that makes sense as to why you're seeing, why we're seeing so much growth this year despite, the, you know, many other areas of, of stock markets uh, struggling. So, and then if we break it down, we go a bit further, exposure to the breakdowns, you've got the technology or info technology, communication, consumer directory, healthcare. This basically just tells you what the fund is made up of as well. Um, literature, this is the fact sheet. So we'll just run through this quickly. This is pretty much the same version of the Invesco fact sheet, but like in the US, yeah, what this what this ETF has done um, comparatively over time is it's just, it's honestly incredible. Um, it just makes you wish that like, you know, well, I'm 27, I only started investing when I was 25 because of, of, a, of a bad experience with a financial advisor. Had that not happened, I probably still might not be investing, right? So just like one of these things that if you know, if you have a parent or a friend that tells you this when you're young, just get it going. Um, but again, we're not going to have to go through this. It's the same information that we see here, uh, just a little bit less user-friendly and a more um, kind of... I don't know, the, the, present, the presentation's great, it's the same stuff, but basically that's really all you're going to need to know to figure out um, what you're getting your money invested in. But So I just want to point out that like this past year, 37%, what it's done is incredible, but you can expect some fairly high growth returns by investing your money into this ETF. Um, and yeah, I'm really considering <laughs> putting a little bit of cash in here too. But that is it for this video. We're going to wrap that up. So I just want to thank you so much for tuning in again. If you got some value out of that, please make sure you hit the thumbs up and the like button. I really, really appreciate it. And it helps my channel out a lot. Um, and then that being said, what do you think about XQQ? Are you invested in it at all? Are you invested in QQQ in the U.S.? Um, or are there any other NASDAQ or high growth focused ETFs that you like that you think are, are possibly a better pick because it has lower fee or it's done better or the arrangement of investments that it's in? I'd love to know. So please leave a comment below and um, that wraps it up for the, whoop, that wraps the video up. So thank you so much for tuning in everybody. We'll see you for the next one.